Welcome to the fifth video in Insights into Matching series. In this video, we are going to talk about the details of match generation. This is actual from where you start working on the workbench or any uh, software and the actual process of how you generate the mess. But the videos earlier to this, which were why the mess is required, how to generate mess or what is actually the generation of mess, various different models which we work on, etc. Those are also very important to keep in mind because if we forget that, the details of mesh generation, the details of where to do the refinement, where not to do refinement, what kind of manual meshing uh, things you can apply, what kind of things you should apply, those will not be understood easily, that will not be intuitive to you. So those videos are very much useful for understanding the details of mesh generation. Over here, we are going to go, go step by step into the procedure for generation of mesh. We are going to use a software ANSYS workbench mechanical interface over here, but this is a general procedure. The same procedure applies to all different kinds of softwares available such as Abacus, SolidWorks, uh, Hypermess, Inventor, AutoCAD, everywhere the same procedure can be applied. So let's start with it. How to generate the mess? We are going to talk about the first step over here. So the first point you should always keep in your mind, the back of your mind should have that you should think about the time and the computation power you have and then select the extent of refinement in mesh. So let's have the first step of meshing. So the first step is think about the geometry. Is it a very simple geometry which has simple shapes like such as cube, cuboid, spheres, etc. Or And think about the type of elements. So if we have some more complex geometry, which has uh, such as a human face, it is an extremely complex geometry. It has highs, dips, uh, surfaces, curves, everything is there. So such co complex geometry will require different kinds of elements. A simple geometry will have more simplified elements such as simple cube or simple uh, spheres will have a very basic kind of elements or the cylinder. Cylinder also has a very basic swept kind of elements. So let's start and go into details of this. So the geometry can be 1D, 2D or 3 dimensional. Those are the bifurcations you should do. And based on the bifurcations on the kind of geometry you have, you should select that geometry file, the geometry type and the type of uh, simulation you want to do. If you have a very basic 2D uh, planar model or a planar geometry, and then if you select a 3D uh, uh, simulation, then you are going to waste the, the time, waste the computation power because everywhere the governing equations will be applied on the, on, on the view of three-dimensional model, but you have a 2D geometry, so that's a waste of time. If you have a 2D geometry, select for a 2D, uh, two-dimensional uh, model, then in the geometry, the second bifurcation will be if we have a single part, if there is an assembly. For assembly, there are multiple options. One of the option is to mess on individual parts. Another option is to mess in the assembly itself. Then in the geometry, if there is a more complex geometry, which I explained earlier, take an example of a human face, then that human face is extremely complex. And in that uh, situation, the first point it should come in your mind is to split that complex body into smaller uniform bodies. So let's go into some examples over here. So let's go. The, the splitting thing is more non-intuitive to some uh, people. So I'll explain this, that and give some details and examples. So the body splitting there are, this is the first example, which is cylindrical electric battery cell. This is a project I did under a professor at my university. So this was the, the actual body beforehand. It was a simple cylinder, but though it was a very simple cylinder and a swept kind of method can be applied to generate the, the elements or mess, it was not uh, automatically giving me proper refined mess, a refined mess and a continuous elements. So what I did was I tried to split that cylinder itself into four quarters. And then each of the quarter can be individually handled and the elements can be generated on it. So this process of uh, splitting 
is very helpful. Then another example is uh, splitting on my uh, suspense and upright. This is from my Formula Student Vehicle Project. Uh, we work on that team. So this was a, a, a step of project and uh, this is the upright and I have made some splits on it. So you can see the number of splits I have made. I have made a, a lot of split on it. So you can see that everywhere a line, you can see they, these are the boundaries of, for individual parts. So you can see this is one part, this is second part, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. In single small sections also, I have made multiple number of uh, splits. So that is later going to help me uh, manually control the type of element, manually control the size of element. If I want to increase or decrease the size of element, have more refined elements in some section or some area, have larger elements in some other area, then all those different kinds of manual control can be easily done on a such body. And then if uh, uh, for another part, an important note, when we make some splits, then a single part has been uh, splitted and uh, then this single part cannot be said uh, one part. These are multiple parts and this, in a, this is a complete assembly. So this complete assembly, the number of parts are needs to be bonded with each other. So the type of context would also be defined in that situation. So uh, let's see the details. So this selection means this is one part, then this is another one part, uh, another part, so these are the details. So in this small section also, I have made multiple uh, split. So that's where it is going to be extremely helpful for me in the next processes. Over here also in the simple fastener, which we have, I have made parts. This is one part, this is second part. This small disc is third part. This another disc is the fourth part and the hexagonal head is the next part. So that's where um, this is going to be helpful later. So you should understand the three, uh, this process of splitting and able to uh, classify your uh, body or the geometry and then accordingly choose the type of modeling or simulation you want to do. So we'll stop over here. In the next video, I'll talk about the next step, which is uh, selecting, uh, selecting the type of elements. So thank you.